In this video, we're going to learn how to write a C program that accepts an unknown or infinite amount of numbers from the user, or what we could also call standard input. One approach to solve this problem would be to create a buffer on the stack. So we could say double buffer 1024. So a buffer is going to be an array to store our numbers. And this buffer has the type double. And so far we can store 1024 double values We'll keep track of the amount of numbers that are stored in this buffer with a variable int total that will initialize to zero because initially there's no numbers in the buffer. We'll create another variable called input and input is going to store the input from the user before we put that input into the buffer. So what I'll do now is create a loop that's going to run an indefinite number of times. So I'll have while true and eventually I'm going to stop this loop with some sort of condition and I'll have a break here to stop it. Now, because I want to use true here as my loop condition, I'm going to have to include the stdbool.h library that allows me to use true and false and create bool variables. So the way this loop is going to work is that we're going to continually accept the number from user input and store it into our buffer. We're going to stop doing that once we receive some special sentinel value from the user. So a sentinel value is a special value that's set aside to signify the end of accepting user input. So our sentinel value will just be negative one, but it could be something different. So we'll use a scanf to accept a double value from the user. We'll have scanf percent lf, and then we'll have and input. So we're gonna store the double value into the input variable. Then we'll check to see if that value is equal to our sentinel value. And if it is, we're gonna stop the loop. So if input is equal to our sentinel value, negative one, we're going to stop the loop. Otherwise, we're going to take that number and store it into our buffer. So we'll have buffer at the index total is equal to the input value. We're also going to have to increment total. So that way the next time through this loop, the next index of the buffer will be set to the next input value. Then when this loop is done, we could output the values in the buffer so down here we could have four int i is equal to zero, i is less than total, i plus plus, where the counter variable i is gonna go from zero up until the total amount of numbers in our buffer. And we'll just output each number. We'll just have printf, percent f backslash n, and we'll output the value in the buffer at the index i. So with i going from zero to total in this loop, we're gonna output each value in the buffer. So we could save this and then try a program out. So over here, we'll compile the program and then we'll run it. I'll enter in five, 6.2, 3.4, and then our sentinel value negative one. And we can see that those values were stored into our buffer and output here. So our program is working, but it does have a big limitation, which is our buffer has a certain maximum size here. We could account for that by just outputting when the buffer size has been reached. So here we could say, if total is equal to 1024, we could output buffer size reached backslash n for a new line. And then we could have break to stop the loop. And that's one way we could handle this situation of having a maximum buffer size. Now, another thing we could do though, is create a buffer with dynamic memory allocation. That would allow us to resize and enlarge our buffer once its size is reached. So we'll do it that way. Up here, I'm gonna comment this out. We're gonna create our buffer differently. We're gonna have double star buffer. So buffer is now a pointer and we're gonna have buffer point to dynamically allocated memory. We'll create a variable to keep track of the size of the buffer. We'll have size underscore T buffer underscore size is equal to 32,768. And that's gonna be our initial buffer size. We're going to use size underscore T as the type because size underscore T can store very large positive integers. Next, we'll use malloc to allocate space for our buffer. So we'll have buffer is equal to malloc size of double multiplied by the buffer size. So malloc is going to allocate space for this amount of double values by taking the size in bytes that it takes to store a double and multiplying it by our desired buffer size. malloc is going to return a pointer or a memory address, we could say, and we're going to store that into buffer. 
So a buffer is going to point to this dynamically allocated array that's now on the heap. Now, because we're using size underscore T for the buffer size type, I'm also going to use it for the total type because technically we could be working with very large numbers now and size underscore T is going to be able to handle larger numbers than int is able to. So then down here in our loop, we're going to change things a little bit. So it's possible that at some point, the total amount of numbers that we've read reaches our buffer size. If that's the case, we're going to make our buffer larger by using realloc to allocate a greater amount of space for our buffer. So if the total is greater than or equal to our buffer size, we have to increase the size of our buffer. So down here, what we'll do is increase the buffer size by a certain amount. We'll have buffer underscore size plus equals. And again, we'll have 32,768. And then here, we're going to use realloc to allocate a greater amount of space for our buffer based on our new larger buffer size. So we'll have buffer is equal to realloc buffer. And then we'll have the buffer size multiplied by the size in bytes that it takes to store a double. So we'll have size of double here. So here we're now reallocating space for a larger buffer. Realloc is going to return a potentially different pointer. So it's possible that realloc can't find space at the existing position in memory for this new data. So it may actually have to move our data around in memory and return a pointer to the new location of that data in memory. So that's why realloc does return a pointer and we assign that pointer to buffer, but the pointer may not actually change. It may just return the same pointer as before. So then down here in our loop, we'll change the type of the counter variable to size underscore T to again account for potentially larger numbers and finally, we'll call free to free the dynamically allocated memory. So that way our program doesn't have a memory leak. Now, because we're using free malloc and realloc, we're going to have to include the stdlib.h library where these functions are defined. Then over here, we can compile our program again. This time, we're going to test it in a different way. So user input in C that's provided from the terminal really comes from what's called standard input. And we can actually change standard input such that that data comes from a file instead. So if I said dot slash D less than data.txt, the standard input for our program is now actually going to come from the data.txt file. So over here, I have a file called data.txt. It has over 100,000 numbers in it. Down here, the file ends with the special set null number that's going to end the inputting of numbers. So here we have negative one right at the end. So we're going to use this file as our test data for a program because it involves a very large amount of numbers rather than me sitting here and typing 100,000 numbers in. So we'll hit enter here and we'll test it out. And we see that our program is working. Our buffer is dynamically adjusting its size at runtime. So this is how we can write a C program to accept and store an unknown or infinite amount of numbers from user input or what's called standard input. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.